This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Gaming Laptops Holiday 2016 Edition, December 2016. So we're going to cover 15 inches, 17 inches, 13 inches, so all sizes, various kinds, and different budget ranges too. So this isn't just for those who want to spend an insane amount of money, but we're going to talk about one or two that, well, if you got the money, they are insanely priced, but you get a lot for your money. We're going to check them out now. First up, the 17-inch traditional gaming laptop category. The big beasts like this Alienware 17 R4 that we recently reviewed. This one weighs 10 pounds. Uh, typically, these are going to weigh anywhere from 8.5 to 10 pounds. They're going to have 17-inch displays and run cooler and quieter than anything else. And we're going to look at ones that are around $2,000, well, starting around $1,500, $1,600 going up. You can configure them a little bit nicer, but not the super expensive boutique ones here at the moment. Surprisingly, my top pick is the Alienware 17 R4. They used to be awful expensive relative to other brands for what you got for the money, but that's not the case. In fact, sometimes they're less expensive, which is always nice, but the build quality is certainly above most of what MSI and ASUS are offering right now. And those tend to look a little bit a little more plasticky. This thing is built like a tank, yet it's skinny. And there's a lot of display options on these. You can get Optimus, or you can get G-Sync, you can get fast refresh, 120 hertz panels on the display. You've got all of these machines we're talking about here have Core i7-6700 HQ CPUs, 2.6 gigahertz, and they all offer options for the overclockable 6820 HK if you want it. And we're looking at your choice here of GTX 1060, 1070, or even 1080 cards. So Dell's scale of manufacture really helps Alienware offer something for just about everybody in terms of configuration. Starts around 1500, you can work your way up. The desirable configurations are around 1800, but you'll find them on sale for less than that too. Another thing that sets the Alienware apart is one of the few 17-inch gaming laptops that has an option for NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics with Intel HD integrated graphics. So you can get like six hours with a 99 watt hour battery, which for a 17-inch gaming laptop is miraculous, where the category average is often more like three or maybe four. Next up, the MSI GT 72 VR Dominator. We reviewed this one recently as well, and now the one that replaces the old Dominator really is more like the low-end Titan, not Titan Pro model. It gets a little confusing, but if you want the overclockable CPU option, that sort of thing, then you're looking at the Titan model. But talking about the, the, the Dominator line, this one is a lot thicker, okay? It's not heavier, though. It's actually lighter than the Alienware. What this gets you is actually a slightly quieter running laptop. So for those of you who really hate noise, for example, the Alienware, you know, has a pretty decent amount of fan noise. It's not Screamer, but it's there. This one is going to run quieter. It's not going to run any cooler in terms of your CPU and GPU temperatures, but there's that. Again, the same Core i7 options here, and you can get this with GTX 1060 and 1070 graphics inside. The price runs around 1900 bucks, and if you want to move up to the Titan, which gets you the hardware switch to go between integrated and dedicated graphics, a couple of other bells and whistles, that overclockable GPU, and you're looking around $2,100. All in all, you got metal lid, you have a metal keyboard deck. It doesn't look that like ultra classy, but it has, you know, the MSI sort of understated look. Other than this logo, which you could cover over, you might be able to take it to work. There's some red accents, but you know, hey, it's a really solid performer and it's a cool runner though. Next up, for something a little bit different, there's the Origin Eon 17X. Origin laptops are for those of you who want a boutique builder, but not with really insane prices. They're not cheap, but they're not like, oh my God, you know, $5,000 either. You can do some crazy wonderful stuff, like put a desktop CPU in your laptop and go all the way up to the GTX 1080. For example, the one that we reviewed, GTX 1080 inside. So, uh, kind of a unique look. It's it's somewhat chunky, but you know, it is loud though. I'll tell you that. The fans on that are loud, but that's because we were pushing some crazy high-end specs in our model. Lastly, there's the ASUS Rogue, the G752VR. It's a nice machine, but it's funny how ASUS lately with, with that line has tended to be a bit more expensive than MSI and Alienware without offering a whole lot more. What if price is no object? Well, there's that Razer Blade Pro that's just coming out right now. It starts at $3,700 and goes up from there, though. Ay, 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 ay. But if you got the money, it's up to you if you want to want to spend it. You're going to get really slim, light, good-looking build, just like the Razer Blades that we have reviewed. That black aluminum body is really striking-looking. You even have an integrated trackpad. I find that a little bit kind of a dubious feature there, but you get the GTX 1080 in there and the usual quad-core i7 CPU inside, it's, 
It's powerful and it's the slimmest and the lightest you're going to ever probably ever find with a GTX 1080 inside. Also has beautiful displays, by the way, with very wide color gamut. Next category, the most portable true gaming laptop. Okay, there's always people in the comments who say, my 13-inch Ultrabook with integrated graphics plays game X and it's fine. You know, yes, older titles, you can do that if you set your resolution down to 720p. You're okay with really low frame rates and stuff. So for this video, we're talking about the true gaming laptops with some decent, really decent dedicated graphics inside to take you up to the, the next level, the serious level for gaming. So that in mind, we're not talking about Ultrabooks here in the classic sense, but beauty is the beast in this case. The Razer Blade 14 inch with the GTX 1060 inside and Core i7 6700HQ. 14 inches, it might be a little bit small screen size for some of you when you game, you might like a bigger picture, but other than that, it's classy. It's the black MacBook, beautiful aluminum build quality, 4.3 pounds. You can take it to work. Okay, it has that green Razer logo on the lid, but you can cover that up. You know, it's it's an exquisite piece. It is just a 1060. These guys are going to have the 1060 inside, which is still a pretty powerful GPU, a bit less future proof than the 1070, obviously. But you know, there's only so much you can fit in a small chassis, but that one certainly is a stunner. It's expensive though. You know, it starts around 1800 and goes up from there, but you get what you pay for there. It's a well-made machine. It is loud. It does run hot, but not as hot as our next in line, which is the MSI GS63 VR Stealth Pro. That's a 15.6 inch. It's also available in a 17 inch size. The Stealth Pro is crazy slim and light. It's like four pounds for the 15 inch model, yet it's very powerful. And MSI has been making these super slim gamers for several years now. I had the uh, GS60 Ghost Pro that preceded it. And you know, despite the fact that it runs very loud and really hot, I'm talking these, you know, some of them are get toasty. This is like burning hot on the bottom. It, it never died. It never had a problem. So it really survives its, its high temperatures pretty well. And that is going to be the theme for these super thin and lights. They're going to be hot. They're going to be loud. Next up is the most powerful and yet lightweight laptop you can get with a GTX 1070. This one's kind of unique. This is the ASUS Rogue Strix GL502 VS. There's also a VM. We'll talk a little bit about that. But this is a 15.6 inch laptop that weighs a little over five pounds or so, which is remarkable. I mean, this is something for those of you who need to be able to take it on business trips or to the class, and you want that level of gaming power that you usually find in a much bigger laptop, it's pretty darn impressive. We have a review of this as well, like most of the laptops I've talked about. Um, it doesn't get that loud or that hot either because it's not super duper thick. Then that really helps a lot with the heat. Price is around $16.99. You'll find it on sale, especially now for the holidays. And there's the VM model with the GTX 1060. If you want to save some money, that's about $12.99 or so. And the difference there is it has one RAM slot instead of two RAM slots here. But ASUS does some nice things to give you fast NVMe SSDs, a good 1080p IPS display with G-Sync on board. Battery life, not so much. G-Sync means no switchable graphics. So it's not going to do that for you, but this is by far the most powerful 15 inch laptop currently on the market. And that segues into the mainstream 15 inch market, which this could also live in, even though it's a lot lighter, but because it has all the ports and bells and whistles that you'd expect of a big 15 inch laptop, if it's there as well. Next up, for those of you who don't mind some more size and some more weight and you want it to run a bit cooler, there's the Alienware 15 R3. That's 7.7 .7 pounds, so it's a pretty heavy laptop. Starts at 1350, but the desirable configurations are around 1600 and up. Lots of ports, lots of dry bays. Again, built like a tank, gets slim there. And the same three display options, like we mentioned on the 17 inch. So you can get it with G-Sync if you want. You can get it with Optimus if you want. You can get that 120 hertz fast refresh panel. You can get 4K even. Then there's the MSI GT62 VR Dominator. This is Honey Who Shrunk the Dominator 17 inch. Now they have one that is a 15.6 inch model. That starts at 1700 bucks, nicely configured. And it's pretty much everything that is in the 17 inch Dominator Pro GT72 VR, only squeezed into a pretty chunky 6.5 pound package. It's not thin, it's not light, but it is still, you know, something you could take with you at six and a half pounds or so good performance as well there. And it's just like its bigger brother. It's available with GTX 1060 or 1070 graphics. And again, all these laptops we're talking about have quad core 45 watt Intel CPUs. By the way, CPUs right now, we're still at Skylake, the quad core next generation, seventh generation KB Lake isn't shipping. That'll probably start in February of 2017, but 
Uh, we have looked at the Ultrabook version of those CPUs, and the performance gains are really pretty modest there. They're a little more power frugal, so I wouldn't really worry too much between Skylake and KB Lake when it comes to these gaming laptops, because the biggest improvement really was integrated graphics performance, which is irrelevant for gaming laptops. Now, for budget gamers, now these still aren't really cheap though. At the HP Omen 15 and 17, we reviewed the HP Omen, billed by Fisher Price. It was kind of plasticky, mostly relative to the previous generation Omen that was so classy and chic looking, but you get pretty good specs for your money. Now, when they introduced it with the NVIDIA 9 series graphics, the prices were super duper aggressive. With the 10 series, uh, GTX 1060, 1070, the prices are not as aggressive, but still, you'll get better specs for your money there with, with them. You could get a 4K display and other niceties for around 1600 bucks with the GTX 1060, maybe even the 1070, depending on the sales. One nice thing about HP is first couple of months after one of their products comes out, the price is, well, pretty fixed. But then uh, several months later, they start to have really nice discounts everywhere. So if you're not in a rush, you might find it cheaper in a couple of months. Then there's the MSI Apache Pro series, the GE 62 VR and the GE 72 VR 15 and 17 inch respectively. Those run around 1250 to 1350 and they're not as thin and light as the Stealth Pro, but otherwise you're pretty much getting the same machine other than the fact they use a lower quality display. It's not horrible, but the contrast is weaker on the Apache line. Those come with GTX 1060 graphics. They're, they don't want to push into their higher end territory there, which is still very capable, 1080p display and the Steel Series backlit RGB keyboard and all the little amenities you expect from a nice MSI laptop. Not mentioned here, and here's why, are the Sager and Clevos, which are really pretty much the same thing. Those are essentially rebadged MSI laptops, so if you don't like the MSI logo on there, that sort of thing. Uh, so they get to be a little redundant with the MSI in terms of what you're getting for your money. Also, there's no really US store presence. If you go to a website like Exotic PC that sells gaming laptops, you can find them there, but not much in the way of PR. We never hear from them, so that's why we're not really talking about them. And then there's Aorus and Gigabyte. Aorus makes some pretty impressive laptops if you're willing to spend a little bit more. For 2400 bucks, you can get a 17 incher with the 6820 HK CPU and GTX 1070. Seven pound, 15 inch package. That's the X7 V6 model. They even have a $2,000 14 inch four pounder with the same CPU and GPU as and that's in the X3 Plus line. So those are pretty neat, but again, not much of a US presence. Don't find them in stores. Don't hear from their PR folks. Then back to the budget gamer idea, there's the Dell Inspiron 7559 Gamer. We reviewed that. That is GTX 9 series graphics. If you really want to save some money, those should be getting some really hefty discounts because the 10 series cards should be coming out imminently. And that one gives you a, really a lot of bang for the buck too. So there you have it, different sizes, different budgets, and well, none of these are absolutely cheap, which brings in one point. If you just don't, you know, a lot of you ask me, I want a gaming laptop for $1,000. And you know, the cost of entry really is higher than that. But there are some ways around it. You can get, something that's been refurbished for starters. And then, you know, even though in my What Laptop to Buy video, I said, don't get something that's not GTX 10 series. Well, there's an exception. If it's your first laptop, you don't have much money, you can get something with a GTX 970 or 980. That's the last generation. Granted, it's not going to be as powerful, but it's still going to be powerful enough to play today's AA titles at, at high settings. And that's fine. And so be on the lookout for those. You can find some deals too, $1,000 and under, just by going for last generation graphics models. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for a whole lot of reviews. Obviously, our YouTube channel and thumbs up if you liked it.